searching for how to implement the copy method for arrays in C-sharp, this is Daniel and you are going to get coded. Here I have Visual Studio open and let's try to create a simple console application by going to File, New Project. Under Visual C-sharp and Windows Desktop, we need to choose Console App and I'm going to rename this to Copy. And then hit OK or Enter. While this is loading, I have here a link opened. You can find the link in the description down below. So we are going to see how to copy the items of one array to another one. As you can see here, I have a fruits array. And this array again has four fruits. And then I have a result array. And this array has uh, its of type string because the type of the items inside the fruits array is string. And then I'm going to pass a size. This size is fruits.length. So is the actual size of the fruits array because we need to make sure that these two arrays have the same size. Otherwise, we are not able to add all the items from one array to another one. So we need, uh, we need to pass the actual size of the source array to the destination array. Okay, this is the source array, this is the destination array. Then we have a for loop. Inside the for loop, we have a simple i variable which loops from zero, the first item. Um, the first item in the array is at index zero until fruits.length, until the last item. In our case, fruits.length is equal to four because we have four elements. So we are going to iterate from zero to four. Once i gets four, we are going to exit the loop. So we are iterating four times. Inside the for loop, we have a simple assignment, which means we add or we save that specific item that we are iterating over to the result array. But you can see right now, we have only one variable. We are using i in both arrays. If you haven't watched uh, the reversed video, you can check this video over here in which I talk I, and I explain how to implement the reverse method. This time, we need to have only one i because these both arrays have similar, have the same items and the index has to be the same. So when i is zero, we have apple. In both arrays, we need to have at that specific index this item. So that's why we need to have the same i. And then we have only a simple for each loop in which I uh, print all the fruits inside the result array. So let's see this in action. Windows key, right arrow, and let's begin typing. So, var fruits, and this could be anything. I chose fruits because it makes sense, it's easy, it's easy to share, everybody knows what's a fruit, so that's why you have fruits. But you can have anything. Cars, people, spaceships, reports, anything. So I am just trying to copy all the fruits inside the fruits array. So apple, cherry, pineapple, and plum, all those four fruits. And then var result equals new string. And then fruits.length. If you don't know why I have to put the size over here, you can check this link over here in which I am explaining why it is necessary for us to pass a size for an array. And then we have a for loop, so for tab tab, we are going to leave i as it is, and then we have fruits, sorry about that, we have fruits dot length. Okay, and then we are trying to add in the result that specific item, so fruits index i. And then we have a simple for each loop. I'm going to rename item to fruit and then result. Inside the for each loop, I have console write line, so C, W, tab, and we are going to print that specific fruit. One thing that I have to do is console.read key so that you can see, and I can see, what's on the console. Before I, I am trying to run this, I want to show you one thing. Here you, you can see that I have a pair of curly braces and here I don't have. The reason for that 
is whenever you have only one statement, you can leave out the curly braces, and it's the same. One thing that I like about the curly braces is that they offer readability to your code. So you don't write code for yourself, you write code so that you can share with other developers, so that other developers can read your code easily, and yeah, you should not be afraid of spaces, of new lines, of curly braces. Some people like this kind of code. I don't necessarily like this kind of code because just imagine if I have to add something here, for example, two statements, I need to add the curly braces. So it's just a waste of time from my point of view. And here everything is just so crowded. Everything just is too squinched together. Here I can breathe, here I have spaces, here everything is loosed. But again, it is personal preference. If you like this type of coding, this type of formatting, you can choose to have this one. So let's try to press F5 and let's see the result. And hopefully we have all the arrays, uh, all the items inside the result array. And we have, we have apple, cherry, pineapple, and plum, all the four items. So let me try to set a breakpoint. I'm going to set a breakpoint in the for loop. And let me try to press again F5. And in this way, I can show you guys what I have inside fruits and result. Right now, fruits contains, uh, the fruits array contains apple, cherry, pineapple, and plum, all four. Here is, we have no value. So the result array is empty. So let's try to press F11. Right now, I is zero, so apple. We are trying to assign the apple, and you can see right now, at index number zero, we have the apple. The i gets one. We are trying to assign to this position, in the result array, the cherry. So, here it is. We have cherry at that index position. Then pineapple, and then plum, which is the last one. Right now, i is incremented, so this means i plus one. So I gets four, four is not less than four, four is equal to four, which means this uh, is not statement, this expression is false. So we are exiting the for loop. And here we just print the console. So let me try to pull this down a little bit and let's try to press F11 and continue st to step into our code, so we have apple, we have cherry, we have pineapple, and we have plum. So all, door, all the fruits that we uh, had in the fruits array. So just to reiterate and to summarize, we have a fruits array, which is our, destin our source array, and we have the result array, which is our destination array. And one by one, using the for loop, we are trying to copy the items from the fruits array into the result array. So one by one, we iterate over this array over here and we are trying to copy all items inside the result. And then once we have everything, we just print everything to the console. I hope you liked this video. If you did, please click thumbs up. Also, my goal right now, if you may know already, is to have 1,000 subscribers. When I do, I will try and hopefully I will succeed to have every Friday a Q&A video and all the questions that you post in the comments below will end up being in that Q&A video. So consider also commenting and subscribing as well. Until next time, bye guys.